Cooling Fan Control Module X400. The X400 was used in Jaguar X-Type 2001 to 2004. This is the Jaguar X-Type. This module causes um, failure of proper fan operation and directly or indirectly causes check engine codes, which when it comes to inspection can get your car failed. I bet you that a lot of cars go to the junkyard just because this module fails to work properly. The first thing you do is remove the module and all the wires completely from the vehicle. You're going to fix it by going in through the back. The back has a seal on it which, which must be cut. These are the steps involved in repairing your control module. The first thing you do is take it out of the car completely. You can't do it mounted in the car. The next thing you do is open the back, which you do by cutting the seal on the back with an X-Acto knife. The next thing you do is drill a hole in the back, simply through the back plate. Apply air pressure and that will burst it open enough so you can get a putty knife in the back and pry the back plate completely away from the module. The next thing you do is remove the heat sink, which is partially holding the circuit board down, and obtain new capacitors and transistors, replace the components, and then reassemble and test it. This is the cut line. Notice that it's on the edge so that you don't hit the circuit board underneath. This is the cut line once again. Notice that it's on the edge so that it doesn't cut into your circuit board and be careful not to cut your wires. Drill a hole through the back plate in such a way that you don't drill into the circuit board. The metal plate is only a 32nd of an inch thick, so your hole doesn't have to be very deep. This hole will allow you to apply air pressure, which will push the back plate out without distorting it. This is a good place to drill a hole because you won't be drilling into the circuit board. Once the back plate is burst loose, you need to use a putty knife um, to pry it apart. It'll come apart, but it has to be worked gently. Uh, the back plate is fairly stiff, but be careful that you don't bend it up or distort it. Pry on the end where the heat sink is inside the unit because there's nothing there to hurt. On the other end, there are small components that if you stick your putty knife in there, you could bend them or damage them. Pry on this end. Once you get it open, the first thing you remove is the heat sink, which is held in by um, cast rivets, which I don't have a picture for. You drill the heads off those rivets um, and then remove the heat sink. Otherwise, you can't get it out without damaging the unit. Unfortunately, I didn't get a picture of the heat sink before drilling the riveted, uh, original riveting out. Uh, but this is how it'll look when you're finished, and it does take a little work to drill and tap those holes out and screw new screws in. That comes later. Once you have the module open, the back removed, the next thing to do is remove the heat sink and then three screws which hold the circuit board in. They are Torx head screws. Then you gently remove the circuit board with the wires and the transistors all in one piece carefully. The way to see a damaged capacitor is if the wrapper has shrunk, which you can see in this picture. There are seven electrolytic capacitors on this board. I replaced all of them regardless of condition because I did not want to revisit this board once remounted in the car and they are not that expensive.
Here's another example. The picture isn't the best, but the wrapper on this capacitor is very much shrunk. There are a couple of them here that look good, but I went ahead and changed everything, all capacitors, all seven of them, just to make sure. The first thing to replacing these capacitors and transistors is getting the old ones out. This is probably not a job where you want to learn how to solder. You have to be careful not to damage tiny components on the board. Some of them are only maybe a less than a sixteenth of an inch wide. I used hemostats as heat sink to protect the board and to protect the capacitors and transistors as I was putting them back in. There are seven new capacitors on this board. They are automotive quality and if you look closely they have no shrunken wrappers. That's how you can tell they are uh, new. Uh, at this point I hadn't changed the transistors. Here the new transistors are in place. I replaced the transistors without knowing if the old transistors were working or functioning correctly. If the capacitors were exposed to heat, the transistors were also exposed to heat. Um, rather than open it up again and replace them later, for about $15 I replaced the transistors. The capacitors cost about $12. This is a picture of the heat sink with brass screws connecting it to the casting and holding down the transistors firmly. By now you should have the old seal removed from the casting and the back plate so that when you put it together they go together easily. The first thing you do is you put the circuit board back in, screw the three screws back in place, and then screw your heat sink down on the transistors. Next, the back plate will go in place and stay in place simply by pressing it in with your fingers. Next, return it to the vehicle and run the vehicle. If you see that the fans are working differently, then chances are you've fixed your problem. If they are not, then you've either done something wrong or it wasn't your problem in the first place. You should notice a difference in the way the fans run immediately. Turn your air conditioning on low. These cars have a CPU, a central processing unit, which has several serial emulations. One emulation is dependent upon another and another and so on. These cars make adjustments as the car ages to keep the car running the same as components age. And as they make adjustments uh, one way, they also make adjustments back, making half-step adjustments as they go. So it takes some running before the car returns completely to normal. My car returned to normal in about 50 miles and it runs great. 